How do we embody, take the pleasure of being in a body and allow ourselves to drop into the here and now? If, if everyone just watching this podcast suddenly stopped time and went, oh, my emotional body lives in my physical and the two should have a dialogue and how would I do that? I would ask myself, this is what I do every day. I put my, I'm often rubbing my heart. Mm -hmm. I put my hand on my body and I say, Deb, is there anything you need? Yeah. How yeah. can I adjust my nervous system? What do you need right now? Oh, yeah. drink some water. Oh, get outside in the sunshine. Oh, take off my shoes. Welcome to the I Don't Believe in Astrology podcast. The podcast is dedicated to conscious souls looking to change the world. Astrologer by day, climate activist by night. Here is your host, Deborah Silverman. Here we go again. I love these. These are called Deborah Silverman does a podcast. You know the name of the podcast? I don't believe in astrology. Me neither. <laughs> but that's the name of the podcast because there's so many people that believe that until they get a reading or, and what's your relationship with astrology, Liz? Yeah. So I didn't believe it for the longest time. I would read like the little, um, the newspaper astrological predictions or whatever. And then I would be like, okay, well I'm Aries, but Sagittarius, like I also agree with that. So it's really just random. And, um, and then, <laughs> and then I got a, a actual a reading where someone looked at my chart and I, it was actually undeniable. It explained so many things. And I was just like, oh wait hold on and so what i did was i related because i do this with everything i related astrology to the body and the systems of the body and then it really started making sense and it's hard to even admit that as a scientist right to be like and then i'm looking at pluto to see what's going on in my system and it's so ridiculous but it's also not it's like of course, we came from the star. Where do you think we came from? <laughs> so it seems so obvious. Okay, so let's begin by I love to let my interviewee be describe themselves, but not just by what you do. Just give us a flavor of what you do, what's been your passion, what's calling your name. We've got an Aries with Sag rising, so she's got a little bit of fire. I'm just getting you prepared. The redhead light above her head is not a surprise. Okay, go. Tell us a little bit about your background and what you do and what you've done and how to describe yourself? Mm. So my history is in sports medicine. Um, for 15 years, I've been working with bodies and injuries and rehabilitation. And it started shifting about 10 years ago to let's take a look at what's going on in the emotional body. You wait, know, wait, wait. Were you a, a physical therapist or a medical doctor or what was the door? So I'm an athletic trainer, so sports medicine clinician. So the, the people who run out on the field when the football players get hurt, that medical team, that's what I trained in. So got a master's degree in that, a board certification. And so I went very much through the Western system. After that, I went and got a PhD in biomechanics. So like the math and the forces and the, the, the <laughs> physics of how the body moves. So I really got this very like quantifiable education in the body. Okay, stop right there. So she has Mercury and Pisces. I'm going to show you her chart in a moment, but let it be said right now, Einstein was a Pisces. People think of Pisces as space cadets, but they love numbers and being able to actually see results from the imaginary life of thought to the physical world. And people never give Pisces credit because they're space cadets. So they forget where they're going and they don't know what their name is and they forget where they left their phone. But when it comes to actual science, they have this ferocious appetite. Yeah. And I used to be like, almost like, oh, Mercury and Pisces. Like my mind is very mercurial, like very imaginative, like Fantasia is my home base. <laughs> and so it's so strange that I chose a path of the science. No, but that's, I'm telling you, that's what I'm trying to say. They're yeah. scientists. People yeah. never say that. Well, and and the real the real scientists are are living in the Fantasia world, but then asking the questions of like, oh, I'm curious. So I have this very curious thread through my body. So that curiosity led to 
listening to my intuition versus just trusting the peer reviewed numbers. And, and I observed myself um, as I grew as a human, my understanding of other humans and the humans I was researching on, I did a, my PhD um, a dissertation was in knee injuries and in female athletes. So I was studying these women and how their bodies moved. And the more that I grew as a person, the more that I understood my own emotional reality, the more I was curious about theirs. So as I grew as a person, as I grew as a, sci as a, as a scientist, I was able to then ask different questions. And so then I said, huh, mercurial, huh, I wonder how many other scientists are actually embodied humans and asking the right questions versus just thinking with their logical mind. And so okay, that can I tell you the craziest thing? You're just going to love this. Yes. So you, you're going to love this. Your sad rising moon in Cancer and your Mercury's in Pisces. Einstein was a Pisces moon in Cancer, sad rising. Well, well so he, me and Einstein have it. Explain how he worked, similar to you. Yeah, yeah. He let his like, emotional body be impacted. Yeah. He let his intuition call his name. He would hold two marbles in both hands on the side of his um, body, and then he would close his eyes. And when he dropped the marbles because he was falling asleep, that's when he'd start working. So he put himself into that altered state. Yes. And that's where most of my um, epiphanies, you could say, come from, where I'll just have it's not from trying it's not from forcing and so as i grew as a scientist i actually shifted away from traditional academia so that i could build my self and so i started working more one-on-one -on -one with people and i do now um somatic embodiment work i do trauma release i help people put together the all of the pieces of what's going on medically what's going on in your body what's going on with your injuries why did you get that injury what's going on in your relationships like every aspect of their life i can boil down to emotional traumas that happened at a young age or fears here's my theory, here's my theory. unprocessed emotions create symptoms of period. course a period and yeah. and if we want to get real ethereal if if people will be like okay yeah well then what about what about <laughs> this is edgy but what about kids who get cancer and i'm like there's um i really believe there is a genetic um epigenetic reason for that and in our genes their genes are expressions of information if that child came into this world to heal whatever was in their lineage right it's going and they they don't have the opportunity for it there's that that genetic expression is going to manifest as a disease and so we can learn from that we can have compassion for that and it's it seems that we have even more compassion for children than we do adults when it comes to cancer. So we're trying to look at as much, how can we heal this? So we'll great, just point. Right no, great point, great point. I'm now going to share your chart just because we've got some astrology geeks that are watching this. We have sun in Aries. We have moon in cancer. We have Sag rising. So we've got double fire. She's super excited with the red fire behind her head. Mercury in the third house of Gemini, the intellect in Pisces, trining Pluto. This is what makes your mental body never ending, fascinated with all things science and intuition. Mm. Two planets in Taurus, Venus and Jupiter. So you're grounded. You want results mm -hmm. because your life lessons Capricorn. So you're like, stop talking, give me your body and watch me do something that makes a difference. Exactly. Exactly. And it's interesting because um, I'm kind of right between the mystical realm and the science realm. I'm between the emotions and the physical body. I'm in even in my even in my friend groups. Uh, it, it's it's uh, people who are really grounded, making big impacts on the earth, and people who are like medicine women up in space. And so I sit right in this middle place of like, cool. Let's let's bring all of that wisdom down and actually feel it in your body. Okay, so tell us something personal. Here's one of my funny questions that I ask on my podcast. When is the last time you cried? Today. 
what happened? Well, my, it's part of my um, embodiment practice. So what I'll do is I'll wake up in the morning. The nighttime is where we process a lot of emotions. So we enter this state where- Moon time, hello. Moon time, totally. And so we enter this state where we're now not in our body and instead our, our brains and our nervous system can process anything that's that's present. We have eight hours to do that, thank God. And again, it's all happening up here. It's all happening in the mental. So what I have found to be really important is to then process it in your body. So as soon as I wake up, I listen to what my body wants to do. And I kind of kind of looks like this. I kind of let it move. And then wherever that fascia or the like interconnected tissue in your body, wherever that fascia feels a little stuck, I'll breathe into it and usually the emotions will come through. So what I process in my dream state, I then bring down and process into this reality. It's so interesting. And so part of that I is- I feel like you're an advanced version. I meet people like you and I'm so thankful for people like you that you're coming in with the new updated hardware, like the new operating system. So rather than being raised as I was, which was completely devoid of emotional wisdom and having no response to my body and being completely driven by my practical self, because that's why they called it earth, even though it's water, <laughs> it's water, it's blue, it's not green. Mm -hmm. However- you're bringing in the new version, which is honoring the water, being your moon in cancer and saying, oh, my body came activated through my dream time. Let me take a moment. I never even thought of this to mm -hmm. integrate and let my system be able to be fully present with what just happened rather than ignore it all and go into a dream state in the middle of the day. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about really bringing it into the body. And so if you, and this is how I live my life and my whole life had to change because I can't sit, I used to teach uh, the university, you know, I, I used to um, work on camera, this rigorous schedule, moving my body on camera, which is like not intuitive. It's like take one, take two, you know, like scheduled and very structured. Um, I had to completely overhaul my lifestyle because I'm committed to the intuition of my my body, my physical body. And so my lifestyle is one in which I'm, I'm so lucky to have built a lifestyle and to have had the privilege to build a lifestyle where I can create a container for myself to then flow into. And from that place, we are constant, I've discovered we are constantly shifting archetypes, no matter what's going on. We see a tree, it reminds us of our five-year-old. We automatically create a, a memory in our physical body, or we meet someone and we're like, oh, I am really triggered by you. We automatically go back to the three-year-old energetic blueprint of ourselves, or we're in a beautiful, expansive state. We have a soulmate that we've met and it's like our entire being is now radiant. And so we shift and we can we contort and we contract and we run into these archetypes. And so in the work I do, I try and like I try and like evoke the Rolodex of archetypes that we have in our system. And if one of them is in contraction, then I meet that, talk to that, and then we heal it together. And do you do, do you have to be in person to have them? No. I love working with people in person. There's something really extraordinary about putting hands on people and helping tap and move energy. But the work that I do oftentimes can be done virtually, especially over Zoom. And why would someone come to see you? Well, if they've tried everything, they have this intuition of like, I think that this fibromyalgia, I think that this cancer, I think that this pain in my right knee, I think that this earache, I've tried everything, but I, I just intuitively feel like there is something emotionally that I'm not processing uh, or have buried. And it's now just finally screaming loud enough that I'm willing to exhaust and step into the, un the unknown currently. And and excavate the parts of me that were in contraction that are that are Love if they that. stay in contraction will overhaul my life for will take right. allow my life to take a turn that is not in my highest alignment so beautiful okay finish the sentence i wish people would hmm. oh, i wish people would listen more than they speak Did you know the words listen and silent have the same letters? <laughs> I love that.
I love that. It's true. Wow. In order to really listen, you have to be silent. It's a, a truth. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So tell me this. When did you first realize you had this passion about the body? Like, did it come the Aries, your little Aries Sag? Were you just a little physical kid? Hmm, that's interesting. So I was a curious kid, very curious. Um, I wasn't very physical uh, because I just felt really actually disconnected from my body. So it's it's taken me a lot, which is which is how it led me to being curious about the body. I think I was like kind of awkward in playing sports. I loved them, but my body wouldn't listen. It was like I wasn't actually in my body. And so recently, um, I discovered it's because at six months old, I as a baby, I used to hold my breath when I was upset, turn blue and pass out, which was like really exciting for my mom, <laughs> you can imagine. And so they took me to the hospital uh, because of course, and at the time it was standard practice to test for meningitis. So at six months old, they bent me forward, stuck a needle in my spine. And I think that's the moment that I got disconnected. It's not safe to be in my body, six months old. So I came in with this fiery passion, super Capricorn, trying to get into my body, trying to like move my body. But I, I luckily, now I have the gratitude for this experience, spent my whole life trying to figure out how to get into my body. My fascia was really tight. My muscles were sore. Movement was awkward. I wasn't like my nervous, my brain and body weren't really talking to each other. I could fake it really well, but it was painful. And as soon as I did this process, as soon as I excavated and listened to my body, felt into which emotions needed to come through that I was afraid of, I excavated this trauma and finally got into my body. And now I feel so coordinated. I feel strong. Every day I still unwind the sticky parts of my fascia, but otherwise I'm like, oh wow, what a block that I've lit that I had for 30 plus years. And I had no idea, it was before, it was pre-verbal. So I had no memory. It wasn't until I asked my mom after I cleared the trauma, hey, what happened when I, before I could speak? And then she told you that at six months she took you. She knew right away what it was. And she had never told you. She never told me. <laughs> Good story. Okay, so what you're suggesting is the, un which is what I promote. I foster this, this whole belief in my course called Tell Me a Story. The imprint that's unconscious, that's underneath the system, has to be brought up to the light. And once you're aware, your observer can rewrite that story from the point of view of what was I teaching myself? Yes. Yeah. So clearly you were, you came in this life to be an embodiment expert Yeah. and how better to be an expert than to know what it's not. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Chiron, right? What did it tell me about Chiron? We don't use Chiron in our system. It's, oh. it's what, what's really obvious because there's so many other ways to look at it. Yes. Chiron's yeah, yeah. valuable, but here's the short answer. Your moon's in the eighth house in cancer. You've got moon in a water sign <clears throat> in a water house. And that suggests that your access to not only personal pain, which is what that story was, but the fact that this child would hold her breath, the, the personal pain body of being human, as soon as we get here, for anyone awake, is like, ew, Oof. this is so, first of all, getting in here. They've Oof. done all these studies about the baby coming through the entrance and the mother's death being so close and the child's death being so close because it's so traumatic. So the very entrance of this existence you're being squished, you're being held back, your mother's screaming and yelling. It's the most dangerous medical moment. Well, if there's some beings who are like old souls going, I don't really want to be here. I didn't like it in the first place. How'd I end up here? Yeah. And that would be your chart. You would be echoing a low grade disconnection to this whole experience. Has that changed? I don't think it's changed. I think it's shifted from being like, who are these parents who are these people i don't belong here like from the black sheep like like no one gets me you know like no one understands me to oh i know why i'm here i know why i'm here and that is why i came and that excitement and that drive is more delicious than anything i can ever explain <laughs> I can totally see that. So mm -hmm. for all of you watching this, there's lots of people on this planet that love being here. They came with an exuberant, enthusiastic, energetic. 
that they wake up in the morning and they just get so excited, they never want to die. And then there's other beings, which is what your chart activates, which carries a wound, or it's usually an old soul that feels like, oh, this place is just too heavy. It's so sad. It's so depressing. It's physically painful. It's gravity. <clears throat> and once realized, you go, oh, wait a minute, there's an agreement we make. You come into an incarnation, it's a spiral, and you can't get off that spiral till you finish. You can't, even if you pull yourself off, they put you back on. So uh -huh. important to know that once the soul remembers, however old or young that you want to be here, just the way you said that with the deliciousness, and I want to be here, and I have a mission, that brings back our life force. And that's why we study astrology. Wow. It's interesting you said the spiral. Um, it reminded me of this recurring dream I used to have when I was younger, where I would always show up at this like dark spiral staircase and I was so afraid of it. Like I would crawl up it like as if I was gonna fall off and it would take me back like almost once a week, if not more as a kid, I would have this spiral staircase dream. <laughs> That's what it's the clue of a baby holding their breath till they went blue. Your attempt to shut the thing down. I don't like it here. The only thing I have control over is my breath. Yeah, that's a sign of a of a being who's Sagittarius. Like, what are we doing here? Like, you know. And so the spiral is symbol of like I'm doing it again. Yeah. We're going around that dark spiral. And then once the soul agrees, which I can see in your radiance, and yeah. says, "No, I want to be here." So tell us about that. What is something? Here's a question I love to ask. What is some couple things in this life that you couldn't live without that you just love about Earth or about being alive? Oh. oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Venus and Taurus, you know, just like, um, I think s pleasure in the body, p physical pleasure, and it doesn't have to necessarily be in a sexual dynamic, but literally just like the feeling of, of like a sh juicy strawberry or a peach, like just, or, or like, sensations on your skin or laughing, oh my god, laughing or dancing and the rapture from dancing and the beauty of the earth. Oh my God, the beauty of nature and flowers. Like, I, like of course we're here in this body to experience all of the pleasure and like looking into someone else's eyes. So I've had experiences where, um, so part of my work is to, oh, I don't know if I wanna share this. Oh yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> So part of my work is mediumship. And of course so, you do. This is part of our, <laughs> our, our platform. You're totally welcome. And so I, I, it's so funny. I'm like not out yet on my, like came from like fitness science world. So I'm like, all right, everybody. Turns out. <laughs> we're my Mercury is in Pisces. My moon is in Cancer in the eighth house. And I have access to the collective unconscious. Yes. And so in part of that, you know, when I'm working with people, oftentimes their loved ones will come through and it's not necessarily a message. I actually get to embody them and have their physical experience and the things that happen every single time, whenever this loved one comes through. Tell us a story. Tell us a story. Oh, so, so there was this one time where I was working on a friend and we had met like not in a, in a magical way and not in my magical chapter and so she she was kind of friending me befriending me and and sort of like i went into my spiritual awakening and like into more of this unconscious emotional realm and she kind of stayed in the like physical phys physiotherapy like fitness kind of realm and so i had i had been patient for about two years and it was just like hey whenever you're ready whenever it feels right i'd love to kind of welcome you into my world. I think you love the body too. I would love to share this different perspective with you. And so finally, I was so excited. Finally, she's like, I'm ready. And so I'm, I'm what I do looks like very much like body work. And um, I kind of move people's bodies and find the places of stuck energy in the fascia. My system can sense where the electricity is low in, in the body and the magnetic field is kind of like weak in the body. And so then I create um, and steward the energy that's needed to help move the energy, whether it's through sound, movement, touch, or talking to the brain, the mind. Um, and so we're in this session and all of a sudden I say, oh, because I can feel it, they kind of like tap on the door of my consciousness. And it's like, all of a sudden this energy wants to speak and move through me. And I say, I think someone's here for you. 
and she's covered in tattoos and and I tapped on a tattoo that was her grandmother basically the grandma was saying like they'll give me clues sometimes and so she came through and all she wanted all the grandmother wanted to do was look her in the eyes grab her face hold her and just be with her And that happens over and over again when people's loved ones come through. They just want to look at them. They just want to look. I'm just like, wow, this face, this vessel, the memories attached to this, these eyes and this smile, and they just want to be present. It's the deepest presence I ever feel in my body. And they, these experiences have taught me what really matters in life, because if someone is in the great beyond, you know, whatever you want to believe is the great beyond unity, consciousness, whatever, heaven, and they come through, they come back to earth through my nervous system. And the only thing they care about on earth is looking at their loved ones and being present. I'm like, well, damn, I think that that sounds like a good life. I'm going to take a note and do that as much as possible. Touch, love, and be. <laughs> that was so Jupiter and Taurus and Venus and Taurus. <laughs> I love it so much. That's the that's, I had on the back of my business card for probably 25 years. It said the pleasure of being in a body Uh, and no one ever like, why does an astrologer psychotherapist have on the back of her business card, the pleasure of being in a body. But to me, that was the whole point. That is the whole point of being here. So I always wear super soft clothes and my sheets are made of bamboo and my incense is burning right now. And the candles are on, like I am saturating my senses. And I invite all of you to consider this. If life has gotten boring, tiresome, if you feel stuck, if your body hurts, if you can't make it to Santa Barbara to go see Liz or or (laughs) to a phone session, then just do this. Look around your world and say, what would make me go, "Mm, secret (laughs) sauce? Like, that's what I do every single day. Like anyone that knows me when I go shopping, I have touched everything, the couch, the leather, because this we're only here for a minute. Totally. Just feel it. Feel it. And before you know it, this whole thing is going to be a dream and you're not going to remember much because you can't remember much from the last one. Okay, this is another great question of mine. Ready? Mm -hmm. Is there someone that's alive or dead that you would wish you could have a conversation with? Mm. You could just have a really deep encounter and say, or or stare at their face and touch it. (laughs) Yeah, I think... um... Oh man, I would love to ask Leonardo da Vinci so many questions. I just love the way he showed up in the world. He hides codes of the universe in art. I think he's an Aries. Oh, he, his work is not just beautiful paintings. It is mysteries revealed or mysteries veiled depending on what level of consciousness you are and he kind of left these little clues and maps for us to rediscover and and take the the mystery out of the universe but and the answer is he's an aries he's an air of course we just be two little fire bombs sitting there it's so interesting leonardo da vinci and just to have a conversation about that, and I bet his Mercury is in Pisces. The oh, thing sure. about Pisces, Mer- people don't get this about Mercury and Pisces. Their fascination with the nature of reality, mm-hmm. which is what makes them so spacey, never stops. Never stops. It never stops. And yours is trining Pluto. So if you ever wanted to take our astrology class. Okay, let's mm-hmm. see. The other, the other one that leaves me, I love these questions. They make me so happy. If you weren't talking about the body mm-hmm. and the embodiment and this wasn't a fixation of yours because we were all fully emotionally fluid. What would be your interest? Where do you think you would put your mind? Uh, um, I'm really fascinated with, oh, this is cool. So I, I'm really fascinated with uh, indigenous cultures as they relate to dance. I mean, it has to do with the body. Honestly, everything comes back to the body. So that is true. But that was another. No, you you can use this one. That's beautiful. Yeah. So one theory I have is that our bodies are healing depending on our environment, and we are being channels for whatever nature is around us. So 
the beauty of the dan the indigenous dances of Africa versus Asia versus the Native American dances. Hawaiian. Like, Hawaiian, the energy of the land is being channeled through these nervous systems for healing. And so one thing that I would love to see, I have this vision of a future where we have somebody from each of these cultures teaching each other and then together they come up with this like unified healing. Oh my God, that's reality. so beautiful. That's so Pisces sad. Oh my God. <laughs> The cultural, the cultural acknowledgement and then reawakening of a universal language that yeah. allows. And that's what I meant when I said you're from the future. And that's what we're just going to wrap this up. I have this feeling about you that part of your gift this life is that you are so enthusiastically fascinated by this existence. And while as a little person, it was scary and you got shocked into the physical plane with the, that imprint, as an adult, you're like totally making up for lost time. You're like, where's the yum yum factor? How do we make sure we stay totally alive? Who can I activate so I can watch them wake up in front of me? <laughs> you nailed it. You nailed, that's like all that's playing in my brain at all times. <laughs> that's so cool. And it was so sweet that we got to meet at that event with Blue and Richard Rod and Zach Bush. Bush. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They did a podcast event and they shared what's coming in the future and what we can do from a poet and from a doctor and from Blue, who's a modern medicine woman. Um, yeah, it was a really amazing conversation. As soon as I saw you, I was just like, hello. Wow. I feel you're just such a bright, radiant fire. I was just like, hot. We just got like yourself. We, we both got have sassy right away. We got so sassy right away. <laughs> So glad. Okay, well, I'm going to thank you. And this is just one more podcast that says it's a different conversation here because usually I'm in the environment and usually I'm talking about these deep issues. And this is really the simple Taurus. Your Taurus is showing through. Mm -hmm. How do we embody, take the pleasure of being in a body and allow ourselves to drop into the here and now? If, if everyone just watching this podcast suddenly stopped time and went, oh, my emotional body lives in my physical and the two should have a dialogue. And how would I do that? I would ask myself, this is what I do every day. I put my, I'm often rubbing my heart. Mm -hmm. I put my hand on my body and I say, Deb, is there anything you need? Yeah. How yeah. can I adjust my nervous system? What do you need right now? Oh, yeah. drink some water. Oh, get outside in the sunshine. Oh, take off my shoes. I, I can't live. I tell this, I just had someone staying here for 10 days and I, I would go out every day in the bike and I would go out every day to do yoga and I would go, and I realized my moon and Aries that she didn't have, but I was like, oh, right. Some people find comfort in their nerves by sitting. Mm -hmm. That would not be you and me. Mm -mm. I got to move. I got to move. And, still and that's just good to know it, but that's back mm -hmm. to the point. You mm -hmm. ask yourself with your hand on your heart, body, what do you need? Mm -hmm. And then you pay attention to it and you take the high road. You want to eat? Let's do it organic. You want to sing? Let's put some music on. You want to sit and you want to meditate? Let's watch some, some air signs love to go into social media. Let's do it consciously. You have permission to put Thank you so much for listening. We want to keep this conversation going with you. So please subscribe to our podcast and leave a rating and review to make sure you never miss an episode. Remember, climate activist by day, human by night. Send Deborah a DM on Instagram at Deborah Silverman Astrology and visit DebraSilvermanAstrology.com. And we're going to leave you like we leave every single episode. Make it your mission to change the world.